My name's Kent Rawlinson and we're here today to go behind the scenes at Clandon Park. As you might have gathered over the last couple of months, we've started talking about how we're going to be bringing Clandon Park back to life, sharing the stories of how a wonderful house like this was made. In 2015, a fire tore through the house, stripping surfaces away to reveal its bare bones. In the weeks and months after the fire, the shock was so great for us all that I think it was obvious that we would want to try and put back what we'd lost here at Clandon. And we really explored that, but with new research and getting to know the house as it is now, we gradually realised how special this is and how much it has to offer us, not just in terms of understanding you know, the bricks and the mortar and the physical appearance of the house, but just the kind of awe-inspiring nature of it, its aesthetic and poetic quality, which is really, you know, really moving. In the last year, we've begun a major phase of work at Clandon Park, restoring and repairing the amazing brick envelope and shell of the house. In and of itself, it's one of the biggest conservation projects the Trust has ever undertaken. Our vision now is to really bring the interiors of Clandon back to life, working with the remarkable broken raw beauty that they have today. It's very rare to work on a project where the skeleton of the building is so exposed. Normally with historic building projects, you're dealing with buildings which have all of the finishes in place, the plaster work, for example, on the inside. But at Clandon, it's all been stripped bare. So you can really see the sort of bones of the building, see how it's put together and start to understand how the different materials come together, how they, they interact. I'm really fascinated by lime mortars, how historic mortars were made, what they were made from, and then trying to replicate those mortars when it comes to repairing these buildings. I think most people come to Clandon, they see the brickwork, they see the stonework, but they maybe don't think so much about the, the mortar. And the mortar is really a kind of critical part of that whole construction process. We could be building walls, we could be repointing, we're using traditional materials, we're using lime mortars. All of these things come into part of the work that we do. There's also some geometry and setting out to be done as well. There's a real wide variety of work and that's work that's gone on for literally thousands of years. When you're using hand tools, you're directly physically working on the stone. You're sweating, you're getting tired, you can feel the thing actually happening. And I think there's a real value in that. It's a hard material and it deserves hard work. What we're essentially doing is looking at the existing condition due to age, but also its condition due to the impact of the fire itself. We can kind of then work out what we need to do in relation to the repairs. So if the stone is in good condition, we're going to leave it. We need to accept that the stonework is old and you know we can accept a bit of erosion due to weathering, due to age, but there are some stones which are physically damaged either due to the fire or other decay mechanisms which we need to repair or ultimately replace in some cases. We've pointed some of the gauged arches which had very deep eroded joints. That's a very, very time consuming job and a lot of careful, clean, detailed work. We've also had to take out individual brickworks and then stitch back in with new bricks, making sure we were bonding in properly. And then moving on, we went up to the top where there was serious cracking and problems where actually the brickwork had to be dismantled, not just repaired in situ. We always learn so much from other trades when we work alongside them and we've got a very good way of working together and I find that really wonderful. I feel very proud and privileged to be able to work on buildings like Clandon and I just want to give it some TLC really and try and add to the whole way the building's grown over the years. It wouldn't have been so special for me to come and work on this building as a fully complete building. It's such an unusual thing. It's another stage in Clandon's kind of life. When you're repairing this stone, you're always trying to repair it back to the original section and the original detail. Not particularly where it is now, but where it was then. 
the trade that's been for thousands of years. We pass on our skills to the next generation. We had those skills passed on to us and that goes all the way back. So there's this real feel of being part of something. The significance of a historic building can change over time. Things happen within the development of a building, various points in history, and that sometimes changes what is significance and how you might present that significance within the building. I really hope that in the future people can come to Clandon and enjoy and, and understand the building, perhaps in ways that it wasn't possible to understand before the project. We hope you enjoyed your tour behind the scenes at Clandon Park today. Thanks to your support, we can care for special places like this for current and future generations. If you'd like to learn more about the Clandon Park project, please go to our website, which is filled with stories about what's happening here.